Thanks to Neutrogena for sponsoring a portion of this video. Have you ever wondered if aliens had anything to do with the mysteries of Bigfoot? No? <laughs> Well, too bad. You might know a dad, or be a dad, that watches the History Channel, that have you come across a show called Ancient Aliens at some point. The Great Flood was created by extraterrestrials on purpose. Where they theorize that every event in human history, or non-human history, was caused by aliens, and almost every historical figure has come into contact with aliens. Leonardo da Vinci may have obtained his incredible creative and scientific knowledge as the direct result of an extraterrestrial encounter. Ancient Aliens has quickly become one of my favorite unintentional comedies of the year. I've binged so much of it that I created my own drinking game for it. Because there are so many recurring things throughout each episode. Things like the Egyptian pyramids, the Mayan pyramids appearing, anytime anyone says otherworldly, otherworldly origin, and most infamously, this phrase coming up over and over and over. As ancient astronaut theorists contend. Anyway, the story of Bigfoot is one that has fascinated man for centuries. Oh. For 64 years. Yeah, the popularization of the legend of Bigfoot in America is younger than I expected. It really seems like popular theories like Bigfoot and the ancient astronaut theory are younger than some anime girls that look like babies but are actually like thousand year old spirits. <laughs> According to Ancient Aliens, the popularized legend of Bigfoot started in 1951 when two British explorers, one that looks taller than Bigfoot himself, found a trail of giant footprints in a remote corner of Mount Mount Everest. The climbers then took photos of the human-like giant footprints and brought them back, starting a media sensation. But that's the Yeti. Yeti lives in the snow and has his own ride at Animal Kingdom. That's not Bigfoot. Maybe a cousin of Bigfoot that Bigfoot doesn't talk to anymore because of weird family drama. The popularization of Bigfoot in America began around seven years later, in 1958 when a journalist published a light-hearted, fun letter from a reader highlighting how loggers mysteriously found a giant footprints in Northern California. And uh, if this was 2015, you could say that this story went viral, if you will. Bigfoot then became a cultural phenomenon, starring in movies, and like I said, getting his own terrifying roller coaster at Disney's Animal Kingdom. But the general legend of Bigfoot is actually centuries if not thousands of years old. There are legends of Bigfoots across cultures across the world, and in Native American legend as well. Apparently that's where the word Sasquatch comes from. So just as history repeats itself, it's really only the colonizer story that gets publicized. So Bigfoot was already kind of a legend before somewhere around the late 1800s and early 1900s that people started reporting sightings of Bigfoot. Big feats? Are they a family? In the Pacific Northwest of America and Canada, in those mountainous regions, there started to have a concentration of big feet sightings, which caused some theorists to grow suspicious of the legitimacy of Bigfoot. Could such a thing really exist? Hey, I'm not a thing. Don't worry, sweetie, I got this. And the way they describe Bigfoot is like that smelly Dorito kid that no one wanted to sit next to in school. I mean, some of the defining characteristics of Bigfoot are that he's about seven to nine feet tall, which is about 2.1 to 2.7 meters for some of you. And the other defining characteristic is that he smells like, hey, sorry, I'm sorry. Like so many of the Bigfoot sightings have reported a foul stench in conjunction with hearing its screeches. Why do I smell Wendy's? You think maybe these hikers just pooped their pants without realizing it upon hearing the gorgeous screeches of Bigfoot. But that's none of my business, I guess. So what do aliens have to do with Bigfoot? Well, boy, you're in for a ride today. Ancient aliens is truly an experience. And dare I say, it gets pretty wild and wacky even. So today I want to bring you through the story of Bigfoot as told by ancient aliens and what aliens could possibly have to do with Bigfoot. Who were they? Why did they come? What did they leave behind? Where did they go? Will they return? Ancient aliens. 
aliens, and Bigfoot. <laughs> so first they decide to tackle the age-old question. If Bigfoot is real, why haven't we caught him? Well, you wouldn't believe their answers for this. Maybe you can. Reason one, Bigfoot is a phantom. <laughs> Bigfoot could be some sort of supernatural creature, like a, a phantom. Bigfoot's endangered. Even though we have captured several endangered animals in the past for preservation and whatnot, um, it's fine. Three, Bigfoot is an alien, and somehow that would make him hard to catch. Bigfoot has been seen coming out of some UFO flying saucer craft. Which angle do you think this episode is gonna take? <laughs> Just, come on, you know the answer. Somehow Bigfoot himself isn't some kind of extraterrestrial. So before we learn more about Bigfoot getting airdropped onto Earth by alien spacecraft, we get this awesome CGI recreation of Bigfoot with some video game stats. The most common description is of a dark brown fur. Their names vary from the location. Uh, but you have, of course, in America, Bigfoot, otherwise known as Sasquatch. They made him look like a Wookiee. <laughs> and all I'm saying is that if Sakurai decides to add more characters to Smash again, Bigfoot would be my main. And actually, now that I look closer, Bigfoot's skin looks really dry. If only they could use a sponsor of this portion of the video, Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cleanser. Thank you, Neutrogena. That's better. True story, I just started my skincare journey, and the Hydro Boost Gel Cleanser has been a great addition to my skincare routine. My face was getting really dry and tight after I washed my face, and now that doesn't happen anymore with the Hydro Boost Cleanser because it is expertly formulated with hyaluronic acid, which I am very bad at pronouncing, to increase my skin's hydration. And the reason it took me so long to get into skincare is because my skin is more sensitive than the average Twitter user and I have eczema, so products would always burn my skin. So I'm very cautious of the products that I put on my face now. And the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cleanser is a lightweight foaming cleanser that lathers and rinses so easily that even Bigfoot can do it. So get Hydro Boost Gel Cleanser online or at your nearest store, and you can click the link in the description below to find out where you can get yours today. Thank you Neutrogena for sponsoring this portion of the video, and now back to my regular content. Now you can't have an episode of Ancient Aliens without mentioning some sort of ancient religious text. In the Old Testament, we can read stories where the gods saw the earth women and thought they were extremely beautiful and so they made babies with them. And upon giving birth, according to the texts, they created a race of giants. Those gods were not gods at all. They were misinterpreted flesh and blood extraterrestrials. Okay, so I had to re-watch this part. This goes on for longer, like four different times, because I'm still trying to understand how they reached this insane conclusion that giants in ancient lore, legend, and mythology were actually aliens. Like, we just went from point A to point B. What was that quote from Far Cry 5? I'm gonna move from point B to point A but probably not in that order. Ahem, anyway, so first of all... In the Book of Enoch, we have a category called the Nephilim, or the Watchers, people who set to come down from heaven to earth and basically lived ever after amongst us. Now, the Bible gives some very little discussion as to really what they looked like, except the fact that they were giants. The Book of Enoch was removed from the Bible. It's an apocalyptic pseudepeph pseudepigrapha. It's an apocalyptic pseudepigrapha, meaning that Enoch didn't really write the book of Enoch himself. So some say that it was never included in the Bible, and others say that it was removed later on. Regardless, it's not canon. One source even claims that one section covering astronomy was written in the second century AD by just some guy who wanted to insert his own beliefs and speculations about astronomy into the Bible with the authority of Enoch. I wonder how much that happened to the Bible that people worship today. I'm only going off on this little tangent because Ancient Aliens likes to refer to the Book of Enoch a lot, sometimes without reminding and clarifying to us that it was a fan fiction for the Bible and not actually in the Bible. So also in this Book of Enoch, Ancient Aliens mentions the gods saw the earth women and thought they were extremely beautiful and so they made babies with them and upon giving birth, they created a race of giants. Okay, so now we're back on track with giants in the distant past. So in the deleted scenes of the Bible, there were fallen angels that had sexual, sexual relations, relations with human women. That created a race of giants. And those fallen angels were actually aliens. 
Because... So then they go into talking about even more ancient civilizations like Mesopotamia and how they had legends of giants themselves like the Tale of Gilgamesh. In this epic poem, Gilgamesh has a companion named Enkidu. Did you hear that? It almost slips past you. In this epic poem. It's a poem. The funniest thing about this show is that everything is real to them. They even say multiple times that our ancestors just... Our ancestors depicted what they saw. Like they can't have a little imagination. <laughs> That's like pretending that bedtime stories like the boogeyman are real and that the hungry hungry caterpillar was in fact really that hungry. Also, why'd they have to paint the eyes on the Enkidu like that? That's so scary. Put their genetic marker on it to make a new being that would be their slave. And they called this being the Enkidu. Oh my gosh, my eyes. Yeah, so now they're claiming that the Enkidu, a fictional character in a poem, was real and was created by aliens as a slave race. Why? Because... Sumerian texts also describe ancient sky gods who came to Earth, called the Anunnaki. These gods were probably extraterrestrials. Sky gods were aliens. That checks out. The Epic of Gilgamesh actually describes a hominid creature created by extraterrestrial beings. And you have to think that Enkidu is some kind of a Bigfoot Sasquatch. Sky gods created Bigfoot. Okay. And put their genetic marker on this beast, but that beast would still exist and probably went on its own evolutionary path to be the Bigfoot and the Sasquatch that we have today. Got it. The origin of Bigfoot was 1800 BC in Mesopotamia when aliens came down and created the Enkidu, a slave race of giants that then evolved into the same Bigfoot that we know today. And the Yeti and the Goliath from David and Goliath. Goliath might have been an extraterrestrial. Now, believe it or not, Ancient Aliens actually has a rebuttal for someone like me saying, well, legends are just legends. Because... Well, people say, well, legends are just legends. But when you have cultures and countries separated by oceans, all talking about very similar things, to me, this does suggest that in times past, these things were very, very prevalent and widespread across the world. Coincidence? I think not. So now Cowboy Hat Man is suggesting that since Bigfoot is able to skirt around civilization and be so elusive to humans and never getting captured, that Bigfoot must have some extra abilities to do so. Able to skirt around civilization, perhaps they do have some sort of extra abilities that allow them to do this. And if so, where did those abilities come from? So we're about halfway through the episode and all they've done so far is heavily imply that Bigfoot is an extraterrestrial species while beating around the bush the entire time, but giving us a wink wink. Bigfoot are somehow uh, an extraterrestrial species. Until now. If Bigfoot creatures are aligned with extraterrestrial beings, as ancient astronaut theorists believe. Take a drink. So now we're getting into the really spicy part. Let's find out how they're going to connect aliens and Bigfoot. Because so far it's just been like, I don't know guys, he might be an alien. Does he have extraterrestrial powers? Now that they've hooked us in for 20 minutes with a bunch of backstory, now let's find out why aliens may have placed big feats on this earth several a lot of years ago. Bigfoot could have been brought here you know, to sort of, let's put it in al alongside the natives and see what happens. Okay, first hypothesis. They got bored and put Bigfoot here to see what would happen. What, are, are aliens just a bunch of Ryuks from Death Note? Just, just messing around with us to be entertained? I did it because I was bored. So that's a good one. I like it. What's the next one, mate? One idea is that these are entities that have been dropped down here as part of a research project. Second hypothesis is that it was a school project to see how humans would interact with Bigfoot. I'd say we assimilated pretty nicely with them, wouldn't you say? Another idea is that the Bigfoot creatures perhaps were criminals 
or some other type of undesirable from an alien planet that have been left on our world. And the third hypothesis is that aliens treated Earth like how England treated Australia and just dumped all the criminals and undesirables here to just figure it out for themselves. If extraterrestrials did create a race of Bigfoot creatures thousands of years in the past, as ancient astronaut theorists believe, drink, might they have had a reason for keeping them hidden from us. Oh, it's getting deep now. We're going into the deep dark now. I'll spare you the next few minutes and just tell you that there are a bunch of underground tunnels in Oregon that some people think Sasquatch lives in. That's literally what they say. Some believe this underground world is home to the Sasquatch creatures. And that Bigfoot hides underground in these unexplored caves, some of which haven't even been discovered yet. And the reason there have been Bigfoot sightings all over America is because of these underground tunnel systems. So it just goes off the rails from here. Suddenly, Giorgio is talking about how hairy troglodytes descended from the sky. The troglodytes are believed to have descended from the sky. These hairy, beastly looking creatures that lived underground. But lived underground, but also were wise and taught us mankind things. They also were very wise and taught mankind in various disciplines. But then also ate people that walked into their lair. Explorations into these tunnels where sometimes people never returned. And aliens built the tunnel systems in order to hide Bigfoot from us. And those underground bases and tunnel systems would have been made by extraterrestrials. Might extraterrestrials really have built caves and tunnel systems to hide the legendary creature known as Bigfoot, as some ancient astronaut theorists believe? Drink. Now we're introduced to another arc, another hypothesis that... That he is actually an alien creature. That is actually intelligent and is just waiting for human extinction in order to take over. Waiting for man to destroy himself, at which time he'll assume dominance. Comment below what your favorite hypothesis is so far. Or a fifth hypothesis. And of course, he also could be the result of genetic hybridization. That aliens took the DNA of humans and apes and made Bigfoot. That aliens landed on our planet and used DNA to create a hybrid between man and the apes. All bets are on. All bets are not on. I'm taking my bets off the table. I'm folding in this round. I'm not playing this game anymore. Could the intermingling of human and alien beings have resulted in this strange hybrid creature? As ancient astronaut theorists contend. Drink. Why? Why would aliens create hybrids? For fun? Extraterrestrials who used our planet as some type of an experimental platform. This feels like an episode of Rick and Morty. <laughs> Not found hard evidence of Bigfoot's existence is because it is hiding out performing some secret extraterrestrial mission. That's it. I don't know what to say anymore. Subscribe and let me know what you thought about these theories. I hope you all had a good holiday. I was sick, so I wasn't able to do much, and I hope 2023 gets better. Also, I just started a video series with Abelina Sabrina. It's on her channel. It's called Deranged DMs, where we look at some of the unhinged things that people send us and other creators. So make sure you check that out. I'm really excited for it. Thank you so much to my patrons. I appreciate you, and goodbye.